So this video uh, is going to give an overview of doing X bar and R charts, which are uh, the uh, the statistical process control chart if you are using a variable. So in this case, we have a, a bakery that is looking at whether uh, they are consistently every day uh, baking consistent loaves. Okay, so. So in this case, every day they take a sample of four loaves and weigh them in grams uh, and then uh, want to develop a, a statistical process control chart that will, uh, will, will allow them to decide whether they are being consistent. So this is five consecutive days, four samples in every case. We know these are grams and grams in weight are a variable so because we have a variable x bar and r chart i told you that at the beginning of the video but but this is how you would tell it is the right choice we're just checking uh we're we're checking my work here so in this case we then have to figure out what x bar is n is equal to 4. We did it for 5 days, but each day we took 4 samples. So n is equal to 4. So x bar is the average of 604, 612, 588, and 600, and that is 601. 597, 601, 607, 603, that is 602. 581, 570, 585, 592. So this day they're a bit lighter, but the average is 582. 620, 605, 595, 588, 602. 590, 614, 608, 604, 604. So there we have the averages. Now we want to do the, the range. The range is simply the difference between the biggest one, 612, and the smallest one, 588, 24. Biggest one is 607, 597, 10. 592 and 570 is 22. 620 and 588 is 32. 590, 614, sorry, 590 and 614, the difference is 24. So we have ranges and we have averages. We then calculate X bar bar. X bar bar is the average of 601, 602, 582, 602, 604, and that is going to give us 598.2. And R bar is equal to the average of 24, 10, 22, 22, 24, and that is equal to 22.4. So we know N is 4. We know what X bar bar and R bar is. So then we simply move to the next step. Upper control limit of X is equal to X bar bar plus A2 times R bar. Um, the capitalization doesn't matter, I can do it either way, is equal to 598.2, which was X bar bar, plus A2, which we take from the table uh, that you've seen before. It is the table of coefficients for, uh, for uh, X bar and R charts. And so we, we would look for N is equal to 4, we would get 0 0.729, sorry, 0 0.729 times 22.4, and that is equal to 614.5. And the lower control limit for X is equal to X bar bar minus A2 times R bar is equal to 598.2 minus 0 0.729 times 22.4 equals to 581.5.9.
So this gives us the control limits for uh, upper and lower control limits for uh, the central for the mean. We also have to do, because we consider variability as well, we look at upper control limit of R is equal to D4 R bar is equal to 2.282. Again, we pull that from the table that is the coefficient table for, um, for the X bar R charts. N is equal to 4 times 22.4 is equal to 51.2. Lower control limit for R is equal to D3 times R bar from the same table is equal to 0 times 22.4 is equal to 0. So we then have upper control limits for both X bar and R bar. Uh, and, and we can look at... Uh, 601, 602, 582, 602, 604 are all within this average. The one, we're all within sort of within these ranges, although the low one, 582, is only just uh, within the ranges. So that might say that on that particular day, on day three, you might want to look at what happened because you barely stayed within the limits, but you did stay within the limits. We can also look at 32, which is the highest of the range. Uh, none were below zero and none were above 51 per two. So the, the process is currently, is currently in control. Perhaps check day three. So now the other thing that you can be asked here or that you'll want to do is that upper and lower control limits set the parameters of your ongoing inspection. So you've got new ingredients. And you sample for a day and you get 570, 603, 623, and 583. And in this circumstance, some people are tempted to do a new control chart, but what we're doing is we have an existing process, something has changed in that process, and we want to see if, if that change, i.e. the new ingredients, has changed the process. We don't look at individuals, we look at the average, because this is a, a chart that looks at the average sample, And just erase that line from my hand. So the average is equal to 594.8, well within the ranges we had established. A bit low, perhaps, but, but well within the ranges. And then the range is equal to 53, which is the difference between 623 and 570. So we can then conclude the average is acceptable, but range is outside the control limits. And we need both of them to be in control. So process is not in control. So, the process has gotten more variable. The central tendency is there, but we've got some very light ones and some much heavier ones, so that range is now out of control. So, that highlights why you need to look at both. So, determine whether you have a variable uh, or a, an attribute. In this case, we had a variable. Take your averages, take your ranges, average the averages, average the range, calculate your control limits, and then consider where you're at. That is a quick overview of, uh, of statistical process control. The only real trick is, is what n is and whether you have an attribute or a variable and, and you've got it under control. There it is.